air. It could rain at any moment. So any advantage that Banyaya oh, gets... Oh, Miller's know. off. He was off. He's uh, off, as in yeah, he's on the green. Track limits, yeah. Really yeah. easy to do it there through two. And away we go. A little jump from Pekka Banyaya. I'm sure I saw from pole position. Yeah. And Jack Miller fouls down inside him into turn one. Fabio Quartararo is going to take second. But I think that Banyaya might have jumped the start there. Yeah, it was either an incredible start, anticipating the lights, or it was a jump start because he moved. The outside from Jack Miller and Fabio Quartararo. Very what a stunning move. Well, it was incredibly aggressive. And we sort of expected that from Jack and Marquez as well. Aggressive up the inside. Coming from the third row of the grid, Marquez up to four. Polis Margro following him through on the inside of Jorge Martin. But I'm sure I saw a move from Banya. If he stopped, did he cross the line? The rules changed, and if you do stop and you haven't gained an advantage, you get going again. Yeah, he didn't okay. stop. He, he, he went, didn't he? That's what we saw. But maybe it was just his reaction that was close. It was like it was oh, Jorge Martin. Again, uh, returning the favour, shall yeah. we say, to Polis Margro. And that's been Aleish can get through. Although Pol and Aleish had their a bit of a tete a tete yesterday. Uh, no long lost between the brothers. As they say, when the helmets go on, they're just another racer out on track. It's Peko Banyaya streaking away with Jack Miller in second, who was hard on Fabio Quartararo. Nothing dirty, but he was a hard move. Quartararo runs it deep in there. Yep. There's fog from the flares around the track. It's tough to see as you go around one of the fastest corners in MotoGP. Mark Marquez is up there into fourth place now. A stunning first lap from him. Peko's checked out. I, have, I don't, can't remember the last time I saw a first lap like that. He's got over a second lead straight away. I mean, he's looked incredible all weekend from free practice one. What did the Ducati bosses tell us? When this man gets his first win, there's going to be no stopping him. And look at this. Oh, that's late. And it's this is a late Martin. move. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's going to go wide. He has to go wide through there. And Martin got through briefly on Quattraro, trying to do the job for the Bologna factory. And Marquez is going to, he's sort of got a run in Marquez, he's going to dive to the inside. No, not this time. Martin has enough in his engine and his Ducati to get to turn four first. I thought he might have a think about a little squirt and underneath at turn five. Joan Zarco, Martin's teammates, had a stinking uh, first lap. He's dropped from fifth place all the way back to 13th. Well, it was as we expected. It was, you know, a bunch of Ducatis. So there's three Ducatis in the top four. And Quattraro, who's had the pace all weekend, arguably the fastest pace throughout free practice four, on his own sat there in second. So there's Paul Espargaro now under pressure from Alex Rins. So Espargaro's got on better with this place simply because there's grip being offered by this surface. Don't forget, there are spots of rain in the air. It could rain at any moment. So any advantage that Banyaya oh, gets... Oh, Miller's know. off, he was off. He's uh, off, as in he, yeah, he's on the green. Yeah, track limits, yeah. Really but, easy to do it there through turn 13. But remember, if it does rain, if the white flag with a red cross is shown, they are able to come in. It's been declared a dry race. So if that white flag is shown, then they do get the option to come in and change tyres. But the gap at the front, Banyaya to Miller, it's 1.3. What's it going to be across the line as Rince makes moves? Rince has got pace. Rince is fast here this weekend. Yeah, it's 1.2 seconds. And what a feeling when you're, you know, you, you end lap two, you look at your pit ball, probably for the first time, you don't usually glance at it on the first lap and you see plus 1.2. What it means is you can relax straight away. You can use all your those flowing lines. You don't even have to think about being defensive. Here comes Quartararo again. Jorge Martin had got through on him at the end of that last lap and up into third place, but he's making it tough for the French rider. Just what Yamaha didn't want, because all the time he spent scrapping here and Martin will come alongside again. Ducati power as he comes through, down to La Quercia corner. He may well run wide here. Fabio Quartararo may well cut back, but that's another couple of tenths yep. going to Bagnaia. That, that's the problem, and that's why I sort of feel sorry for this man, Fabio Quartararo. Great move there. Block Thick pass. Classic block pass that we see on this corner because you invite the block pass, the racing line, you hang out wide to try and square that corner off turn 10. You have to, like, make a square out of it because you, you stand the bike up and use the power, and uh, Quartararo didn't need a second invitation. Oh, credit to Fabio Quartararo for keeping his wits about him at the moment. He's under pressure. He knows that he's going to be dive bombed yeah. pretty much every single corner of that Ducati gets a run oh. and Martin he had the hard front uh, medium front tire sorry in the front of his bike and he's gone out at turn 14 we've seen a lot of them this weekend on that corner how many times have we seen that happen it's at the point you're on maximum lean just about to touch the throttle to try and get the bike to turn and uh, 
there's nothing you can do really. And Fabio Quartararo will be breathing a sigh of relief yeah. after that one. And Alicia Spar grows through on Mark Marquez, so that's your fourth and fifth places now. And then I, look at uh, Ania Bastianini again, Neil, seventh place. I know he got another uh, good qualifying in 12th place on the grid, but sixth last time in Aragon, seventh now. Yeah, looking. Looking solid, and do you know what, Ducati is singing his praises because they know he's on the older Ducati. We know that bike doesn't turn quite as, as well as the 2021 uh, Ducatis, so they're already excited to promote him onto the latest bike. Further down the order, top KTM, Brad Binder. Uh, Rumours he might have been running an old chassis today because they have just seemed to have lost their way a little bit in recent rounds. And Maverick Vinales on the Aprilia. I remember he tested here before he, not before he signed for the team, but before coming here this weekend. Uh, started the weekend on Friday as the fastest rider. Unfortunately, starting 10th on the grid, he's dropped back into 16th place. Yeah, Vignales has looked fantastic at, at points this weekend, but unfortunately his Achilles heel, which we've seen a lot actually through his Yamaha career, is those first laps. I'm sure he'll settle into a pace and probably work his way up from, uh, well, he's yeah, currently 16th place. As things stand, the champion is closing up as an Bastinini finds a way through on Paul Espargaro. More and more impressed by this young Italian every single time we go around. Moto2 reigning champion, of course. So it's oh, no this going to be a late move. And that's Alex Rins. You don't make many passes into there, into that last corner, turn 16. It's really one line, so... Well, that's Paul Espargaro about it from 1-2-5. So yeah. And Andrea Nonni collided with him and they both went down. And it turned into fisticuffs. Rins was very, very close to the edge of the track. In fact, he's going to sit Espargo up on the flick back into turn three. Rins got that one wrong. He went very, yeah, very deep. The reason he did was because he knew he'd gone into the last corner, uh, obviously tight to make the pass. And then you're assuming someone's going to outbreak you into turn one. So you break extra late. And then um, that's why you made the mistake. The psychology of a rider, you sort of know when you're going to be passed, even though you've not got eyes in the back of your head, you can feel it. Brilliant start to this race. Bagnaia is leading from Jack Miller in second. He's got 1.2 seconds now over Quartararo. And Alicia Spargro there, losing on exit from turn eight to Mark Marquez, who's into fourth place. You said there's not a hope of me battling for the win today. Well, I tell you what, if it does start raining, he's lining himself up well here as Bastianini's going to breeze past. Uh, Spargo here. It's yeah, like Aleix can't get the power down or something. At yeah, the that, that was all horsepower from the Ducati out of there, wasn't it? Yeah, Aleix is struggling, but we saw it a little bit with Sam Lowe's. Um, it's quite easy to lose a little bit of rhythm. If you get passed by a couple of people, you make a few mistakes. It just takes you a lap to settle down and get the feel and understand him. We had an A Bastianini for fifth place in this one. I'll tell you what, he's doing superbly and he's now in behind. Mark Marcus in closing all the time. Uh, the pace at the front, Bagnaia 32.4. Fastest rider on track, Jack Miller, a 32.3. I wonder if there are just a couple of spots here and there on their visors that just, you know, he's keeping us the pace further now, 33s and a 34 for a lace on that lap. Yeah, it makes you wonder. He's two seconds slower on that lap, a lace. Uh, than Fabio Quartararo, for example. Yeah. So I was thinking about quite that uh, Peko Bagnaia. All winter, he's been riding around this track, practicing how to go fast on the very first lap. It's been his weak point. Deep. What a ride from Ilea Bastianini across the line. Whoa, oh, this is scrappy. Marquez and Mia Hunt oh. Miller. I don't believe it. Paul Jack takes sixth with Paul Espargaro in seventh. He got through on his brother at the end. Brad Binder is ninth. Quartararo straight over to congratulate Peko Banyaya. But Banyaya judged that one just look at, right. Look at Banyaya's last lap. That's a decent lap time. That's his fastest lap for, for, for probably about 10 laps. Absolutely on the limit. And do you know what he did? His pace looked like it dropped a bit, but it only dropped by a couple of tenths, but he could keep that pace. Yeah, brilliant stuff from Bastinini. Even better, though, from Peko Bagnaia. He's done it again. We've talked about it already this weekend. David A. Tardot, he said, when this lad wins one, he's going to win again very soon. His teammate did help him in those early laps by keeping Quattraro honest, keeping him at bay. And he's played his part for the team. Well, for Peko Bagnaia, it's just like buses, isn't it? <laughs> you wait ages for one, and then Peko Bagnaia turns up on a Desmosedici. <laughs> back-to-back poles, back-to-back wins, absolutely 
inch perfect today. And actually, when you win by 0.3 across the line, it doesn't matter. You've won, and that's all that matters. Well, You've judged it absolutely, absolutely right. perfect. And again, dealing with the maximum pressure on the last lap. A 32.5 from him, a 32.8 from yeah. Quartararo. So he was three tenths quicker. He only won by three tenths across the line. Yeah, unbelievable. Mir has been demoted a position for exceeding track limits on that last lap. So he'll so go that behind Miller. Back to sixth place behind Jack Miller. Not we we didn't see that, of course. We were too busy uh, watching the battle at the front. <laughs> and look at that for Enea Bastianini. And that's his old uh, Simoncelli 58. He's got Marco Grana down there celebrating with him. And Nicolo Bulliga too. That's a pair of shorts as well. You've got a pair like that, Gav. <laughs> play, you play golf in them, don't you? Uh, Valentino Rossi oh, taking the acclaim of the fans.